Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and welcome back to another Sunday sew along. We actually have a sew along for today. <laughs> So today we are going to be starting the uh, Style Arc Spencer Woven Pants. I'll talk a little bit about the pattern here in just a second. Uh, but today we're going to be going over our supplies, um, the fabric, different fabrics you could choose, how to pre-wash, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then at the end I will show you what you need to have cut out and what and where the interfacing needs to be and all that. So basically today is kind of a prep day. We're going to go through the supplies, how everything needs to look when it's cutting out, and I think this is going to be a um, five-part sew along. So um, today's part one, obviously, <laughs> but actually on part uh, four, I think, um, so in a few weeks, uh, I'm going to be showing you how, this pants, these pants are unlined, but I'm going to be showing you how to add a lining to a pair of pants. So actually we Part four is going to be part of the sew along, but it's also going to be a separate tutorial on how to add lining to a pair of pants, um, how to add lining to a pat pant pattern that doesn't include one, um, specifically one with a fly, because that it was what this um, pattern includes. So um, it will be in the part of the sew along when you need to do that, but also I wanted to keep it as a stay along tutorial because that tutorial would be good for whether or not you're making this pant pattern or any pant pattern. Um, and then week five, we'll be finishing up um, our pants and all that kind of thing. So hopefully by the end of this, you have a wonderful pair of um, wide leg trousers um, that you love and want to recreate in a whole bunch of different fabrics. So that is kind of the plan going forward for the next five weeks. Okay, on for the Sunday videos. Okay, so um, today, like I said, we're going to go over our supplies and what we're going to need. And I've got here in my lap, I'm making a pair of green pants. But as you can see, I have like every color of green under the sun. I have like my olive. I have like a um, winter green, like an evergreen, and then like a spring green. Um, oh, and even my zipper is kind of a different color. It's a little less like a hunter green kind <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> that's fine. You're not going to see all these pieces once the pants are um, assembled unless you're putting the pants onto your body. So um, we're just going to go with what we've got. All right, let's talk a little bit about the pattern before we get any uh, further into this. So again, this is the Spencer Woven Pant by Style Arc. This is a wide leg pant that features nice pleats in the front darts in the back, so it's relaxed through the um, hip and through the thigh. Um, it sits at the natural waist. It has a functioning zip fly in the front. It has piping along the slash pockets in the front, which I've not done on a pair of pants before, but we'll be doing that um, together uh, next week. No. Are we starting with backs? I think maybe... Sorry, we'll be doing that together, not next week, but the following week. Um, we're going to start with the backs. Uh, the back features a welt pocket on just one side, but of course you can um, alter that and put welt pockets on both sides. That's up to you. And then um, it has a cuffed hem at the bottom, um, which I think is really cool. And it does help weight the pants really well, so um, you get a nice drape on this. That being said, let's talk about fabrics that we can use for the main part of our pant. So again, this pattern does not include a lining, but I'm going to show you how to um, adjust the pattern to include a lining and then how to put that into the pants. So that's where we're, I'm deviating a little bit. Um, I'm also deviating. This pattern it has a sewn on fly. Um, I prefer a grown on fly, so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to um, alter the pattern for that as well. It's just my favorite um, way to insert a fly is with a grown on fly. I just think it's, I think it's better. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do. But that's really the only place where I'm deviating from the pattern. This isn't my, um, actually, I've never put a back welt pocket in the way that they're kind of saying. Um, I normally have just one big pocket piece. We'll get into that later, but I am going to follow the instructions for the back welt pocket and we'll see if that's a way that I prefer it or if I want to change things up for a future pair and, you know, that could be another video or something. Um, anyway, that is kind of what we are doing um, to the pattern uh, going forward. So this pattern recommends um, linen, wool, crepe, and gabardine are in the um, selection, which I think wool is just kind of, you know, like wool could mean melton wool, which is 
very thick fabric. Wool could also mean a wool chalet, which would be way too thin for a pair of pants. I don't know why patterns do that. Linen is a little more universal. So you just want a bottom weight linen. Although with this pair of pants, you could get away with a linen that's a little bit thinner. Maybe not if it's like a light color, you might be able to see through it, but um, because there, it's so voluminous and it's not fitted through the hip and butt um, because of the pleats and stuff on the front, um, you can get away with a little bit thinner um, linen than you would if you were making a more fitted pair of pants, if that makes sense. I would recommend, um, if you are wanting to go the linen route, I think that the, um, and it is a little bit lighter weight, but the organic linen from the fabric store is a great place to look. Their heavyweight linen would also work. That would give you a little bit more um, structured pair of pants because it is a thicker fabric. Uh, but any place where you can find like a good mid-weight linen, um, I think what would be beautiful on this pair of pants, because of the pleats and you want a beautiful drape on this wider leg, I think that the um, any kind of a rayon linen blend would be perfection for these pants. Again, you can go just a little bit thinner than you would on a fitted pair of pants because it isn't, you know, it's not hugging curves um, and showing, you know, bumps and all that kind of stuff, bumps and lumps, which, you know, whatever. Um, but that is, um, would be, I think that would be beautiful. I think you could also use a rayon twill, like a bottom weight rayon twill. This would be beautiful on that. Um, I, I, yeah, so take a look at those type of fabrics as well. The um, Kaufman Brussels linen, which is a linen rayon blend, would be beautiful on these pair of pants. I know style up. Style Maker um, fabrics carries some of that in a whole bunch of different colors. Um, so anyway, you can you don't have to do just 100% linen. I think linen with a little rayon and it would be beautiful. Linen with a little cotton and it would be beautiful. Um, and you get a little bit less of the rumple from linen when you use a linen blend. Um, the linen rayon, even though rayon wrinkles as does linen because of the weight of the rayon, that helps pull out some of the rumpled. Um, effect that can come from linen. I personally love the rumpleness of linen, so um, that's just kind of up to you. As far as wools, and I'm going to put any kind of, um, even like synthetic or, you know, like a poly blend, any suitings basically. So I know you can find some really great like rayon blend suitings, um, even some, um, Oh, the stuff like doesn't wrinkle, which usually is like a polyester or some sort of a synthetic blend um, would be really beautiful. But any kind of suiting would be great. If you're going to do a crepe, I think you could use a rayon crepe. Um, just make sure it's a real thick one. A lot of times rayon crepes can be a little bit thinner. So I would use a thicker rayon crepe for the pants. Um, this would be beautiful in a wool crepe. I'm using a wool and um, I will be showing you again how to line that. So if you're worried about wool being itchy, I the lining will solve that problem. <laughs> Um, also gabardine, which is another type of suiting. It's just the way that, um, the fabric is woven. You can find gabardine in some synthetic, um, blends as well as wool. Um, yeah, I think any of those would be beautiful. I would stay away, I think, from like a cotton twill, only because cotton has a lot of body. And, um, I think that it, you're, you're not going to be happy with your pleats. I think they're just going to stand away from the body a little bit too much and maybe cause you to look larger where you don't want to look larger. Um, but I think, let's see, what else would I suggest in fabric? I mean, any kind of lyocell or tinsel twill would be gorgeous. Um, yeah, so you want something with a little bit of drape just because I think that looks beautiful with um, some of the pleats on pants. It makes them not as bulky. So that is kind of my recommend recommendation with that. Um... If you are not lining these pants, which is fine, I'll show you the fabric I'm going to use here real quick. So I am using this, um, gabber I'm using a gabardine and this olive, beautiful olive color. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, I actually got this, bought this for my friend um, Marissa because she had her colors done and she is a summer. And so um, she's like, hey, I just bought this fabric. It was like a three yard bundle um, that she got for a very good price. Um, but she's like, and it is not anywhere close to being in my color palette. Do you want it? So I bought it off of her. Um, yeah, it's three yards of wool gabardine. It was normally $120 and she got it for 30 bucks. So um, I bought that off of her very quickly. Um, I've got more than enough for this pair of pants, so looking forward to that. So I will be using a wool gabardine. Let's talk about pre-treating real quick before we get into the other supplies that we need. If you are making something with a wool, yes, you can definitely hand wash it. If you think about it, people were wearing wool trousers, wool pants, wool dresses 
long before dry cleaners came into existence. The thing with wool is that it will felt if you're not careful. So you do want to hand wash and you can, I put wool in a hand wash cycle in a machine before. Use a delicate soap, something meant for wool. Um, I like to use my um, wool wash that I use for my hand knit sweaters. Um, soak is my personal favorite, um, but that is a nice gentle soap. So it's not going to, um, felt the fabric. Uh, but the hand wash cycle, you're going to have less agitation, so it's not um, causing friction. Wool will felt with heat and water combined. Um, sometimes it'll felt with just an agitation. Sorry, agitation is the last part of that um, uh, combination. So warm water, agitation, and um, yeah, I guess the warm water and agitation cause, causes it to, to felt. So oh, I always do my wools on cold water um, just to eliminate the fact. Always do a sample though if you're not sure like how your machine's gonna react. Alternatively, you could actually hand wash your wool just like you would if you were hand knitting a wool sweater or that sort of thing um, with a wool wash. Then you'll definitely be fine and not have to worry about the um, fabric felting. But it's the agitation, the friction um, with the warm water that causes the wool to felt. So um, you just wanna be careful there. But you can wash it on, I've washed wool on a hand wash set, setting um, with cold water and proper soap. The wool, like I said, I like soak is my favorite, but Euclid is great um, or any just kind of delicate soap that's meant for wools would be great. Um, don't dry it. <laughs> don't put it in the dryer. You definitely do not want to put wet wool into a dryer because that is going to be agitation with being tumbled like a tumble dryer. And then you're adding heat that that's going to shrink it up. That's why sweaters shrink. Um, so you're going to want to let it um, air dry now. Um, and then going forward, you will wash your finished pants in the same manner. I find it very fussy to have to hand wash a pair of pants, so I am not going to pre-treat my fabric. I'm just going to dry clean them. They're pants. They're not going to need to be washed all that often, so I'm just going to rely on dry cleaning for mine. Um, I don't dry clean a ton of my stuff, but I think for these, I just it's fussy. And then having to get make sure that your pleats stay pleated and crisp. It that's what the dry cleaners do. <laughs> So these are going to be a dry clean only pair of pants for me. So I'm not going to worry about doing any pre-treating of my fabric. But yes, if you wanted to let it line dry, your fabric yard is line dry. And then going forward, you're going to hand wash your pants or put it in a hand wash cycle, the same type of soap, and then let them line dry. And then you'll need to press them. So um, that is how I would suggest pre-treating with wool. Now, for mine, because I've decided to dry clean it, um, I am going to pop them into a dryer with a damp towel. What this does is steam treat it. So the, the, as the um, dryer heats up, it heats up that towel that's wet and causes some steam in there. Or if you have a dryer that has a steam setting, just do that. Just pop your wool yardage in there on a steam setting. Now you're gonna say, I thought you said not to dry it. Um, you're only gonna get the felting if the fabric itself is wet. And it takes a lot for wool to be saturated and wet. When you think about the fiber, um, it, it really has to open up. It's a very light wool threads are very, uh, there's a lot of air in there um, because of the kink in wool. So um, it takes a while for it to become completely submerged with water, which then cause it, can cause the felting. That's when those little barbs that are there in the fiber um, hook onto one another. So you're gonna be fine. Don't worry about felting. You're putting dry yardage into the dryer with a damp towel. That's just gonna steam treat it. I do that when I'm making my coats and stuff as well. Um, it's just a little bit easier. And then you're not having to stand over your fabric, you know, with a steam iron, steam treating it that way. So that is what I'll be doing with my um, pair of pants. And then I'll be dry cleaning mine going forward. But that's up to you on if you want to um, do that or not. Okay, so that is the main fabric I'm gonna be using for this. Next is um, the pocketing. Now, um, the pattern doesn't call for any different fabric for your pocketing. I prefer cotton. It's just, number one, it's easier to sew, and it's just a little bit more um, sturdy, and it's a light. I like to use a light cotton. So this is a cotton lawn in my stash. Um, I'm going to use this for the back pockets as well as the um, front pockets. Now, there will be a facing piece, um, so one half of each pocket, both the front and the back, well, will need to be same fabric so that, um, you know, when the pocket pulls away, you're seeing the main fabric and not the pocketing. But for the other half of it, I am going to use a cotton lawn because um, it's going to help reduce bulk and uh, just be a little bit easier to sew. 
you can use whatever color you want if you're doing dark, uh, you know, a dark fabric. However, if you are making any kind of light fabric, may I suggest using a nude to you colored pocket lining. So um, in a cotton lawn, you can find cotton lawn pretty inexpensively. If you're making a white pair of pants, don't use white cotton lawn. That's just asking for them to stand out. So any lighter fabric where you're going to maybe have some shadowing or see-through, use a nude to you colored um, cotton. Um, lighter weight's better just because you're just going to have less bulk. So that's what I'm using for my pocket linings. And then, and this is completely up to you, I am going to be um, lining my pants and I am using, this is a Bimber Rayon lining from my stash uh, that I need to iron. <laughs> it's very wrinkly. Uh, alternatively, you could use silk if you wanted to get really fancy. Uh, China silk is fabulous for linings because it is slippery, but it's really thin. You could use a charmeuse, but sometimes charmeuses get a little bit thicker and um, you want less bulk. You don't want it too heavy of a lining that can get it to be a fairly bulky pair of pants. Um, keeping in mind, these pants do have pleats in the front. I will not be pleating the front of my um, lining. We're going to actually turn those pleats into darts for the lining so that we have less bulk there at the abdomen. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but I'm going to be using a Bimber Rayon um, for mine. Um, you can use acetate. You could use a polyester lining. It's really up to you. Um, I know some people... Static can happen with polyester, um, but honestly, any two fibers that aren't the same that are rubbing together are going to cause static. So even your um, Bimberg rubbing up against your wool can cause static. Um, you know, it's it, that's just the nature of the beast. But I am going to show you how to um, anchor your lining, um, how to put little um, swing, um, what am I wanting to say? Not a tag, but little... Um, I guess a swing tag, I guess, um, but to connect your hems so that you aren't, you know, worried, you know, the lining of your pant isn't like halfway up your leg stuck, um, which really does help with the um, static. <laughs> Keeps everything in place as much as possible. You may feel the lining sticking to you in a few places, then dryer sheets are your best option, um, just like with a skirt lining. But um, yeah, that is kind of uh, the thing with the lining. And I will show you how to fasten those to the hem where they can't be seen, but they keeps everything together. So um, yeah, I'm going to be using Bitburg Rayon for my um, lining of my pants. Next, we're going to need some interfacing. Interfacing. I am using for mine the um, Fashion Sewing Supply Pro Weft Medium. Um, it's just a nice weight of interfacing for tailoring and that sort of thing. Really, the only places where we're going to have um, interfacing is the back welt um, around that, uh, the waistband, the fly, and then the um, they, there's a little interface interfacing piece for those slash pockets to keep those from um, pulling out of shape. So that's the only spots we're going to be needing them. Um, and I think I only have white. If I have black, I will use black just because it's a darker fabric, but um, I just grabbed this little sample. Um, it's just a really nice weight. So I'll be using the Pro Weft Medium um, for the interfacing on my pants. All right. And then last, that Bimberg really, it gets really um, stringy and it likes to static to everything. <laughs> but you're going to need a button. Um, it's, it calls for a 22 mill millimeter, which would be 2.2 centimeters, which is roughly, it's in between three quarters of an inch and an inch. Three quarters of an inch is roughly two centimeters and yeah, and then one inch is roughly two and a half centimeters. Um, so 2.2 is kind of right in between there. So I have a good three quarter inch button that I'm going to be using. Uh, you know, just, you just need one button. So pick that and then a zipper. The pattern calls for a six inch zipper. I like my zippers to be extra long. In fact, I think this is an 11 inch one. Um, I just buy them all long, like an 11 to 12. I prefer to cut off the top. I am using a nylon coil and I think this is a number three, um, and maybe it's a number three. I'm pretty sure this is a number three because it's a lighter weight fabric that I'm using. Now, if I were making something out like denim jeans, I wouldn't want to use a nylon zipper with denim. Um, or if I were using, uh, making a pair of pants that were really fitted through the hip, I would not want to use a nylon zipper. It would break. That's when you want to pull the metal teeth out because they're stronger. But with a pair of pants that are nice and loose flowing like these are, you can use a lighter weight zipper as well. Um, it's really just to keep the pants closed and you're not trying to keep anything sucked in. So um, it works really, really well. So I will be using just a regular nylon zipper, just your standard zipper, nothing fancy about it. 
um, and I'm pretty sure this is a number three, um, in a color that's not going to stand out when I, you know, you shouldn't be able to see the zipper with a fly. Um, your pants are too tight if you can. So <laughs> if it's pulling that much, um, so I will, um, yeah, so it really doesn't matter what color you use. I don't want to use anything that's a stark contrast because I, you know, if it does, you know, if I happen to turn a certain way and it pulls a little bit, I don't want people to be like, whoa, it's a red zipper or yellow zipper or whatever. <laughs> so just this color that's close is fine um, with your pants. And that is everything. That is all the supplies that we're going to need. Um, hopefully that answers questions about fabric. Obviously, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'm happy to answer that. Also, if you enjoyed this type of content and you would like to see more of this type of content and like to help support the channel, I have a coffee account, which is like a virtual tip jar. All the money that come, that goes into that um, coffee account or that virtual tip jar goes right back into the channel um, with supplies, um, the you know, lighting, equipment, um, software, all that kind of stuff, mostly for the more educational videos like this. Um, so if you'd like to help support that, that is linked down below. Um, okay, before I say goodbye, let's go over to the cutting table and now we're going to take a look at all of our pieces laid out, what I've interfaced, what I've cut out of which fabric, um, so we'll be ready to start sewing next week. I'll see you then. All right, let's go over all of the pieces that we cut out and I'm gonna show you how I cut out my fronts just a little bit differently um, because I like the um, grown on fly as opposed to the sew on fly. Um, so we'll start with the front here. So you're gonna cut out two fronts, which I have done here. Um, the legs go off obviously. And make sure you mark your pleats. I've done some adjustments to the depth of my pleats just for, um, to give my waist a little bit more room. But um, I have done that and, and marked notches basically where those pleats are going to be taking note that the outside pleat will go to the inside. But we'll get there when we sew them. Now the pattern piece for these actually just looks like a regular front like this. But I wanted the grow on fly. So when I cut this out, what I did is I used the fly facing piece, which the fly facing piece um, tells you to just to cut one um, out of fabric, out of fabric and uh, interfacing. I ignored that completely. <laughs> and what I did was I lined up, now this, um, Stylark's great because they have the dotted line is the sewing line. Um, so I matched my sewing lines up the way it would have been sewn to the front of the pant. I overlapped those like so. And you can either put a little bit of tape down or um, I just put a pattern weight on there when I'm cutting them out. So then when I cut out, I'm cutting out all the way to this point and then down and then around, which gives this look to the front of the pant instead, okay? And then I used this piece uh, to cut my interfacing and I fused my interfacing. Hopefully you can see that okay. I know it's black on green, I'm sorry. I was afraid there's just enough um, wiggle room in this weave that you could see the white, like that you'd be able to see the interfacing on the other side, so I wanted to use black. Um, and I've got a thread. But I put, just cut this out of interfacing and interfaced it to the front of both pants. And then, if I line this back up again, so I'm putting my sewing lines on top of each other. So I'm overlapping those dotted lines. I marked right here at the base of this point. Um, so the sewing line right here and stuck a pin in because that's going to be the end of my zipper. And then I made note of it on my pattern on both sides. Hopefully you can see that. Just a little dot there. Okay. The other thing we do to the front, we have this piece, um, I guess it's piece 14, which is the front pocket opening stay, stay, yeah, sorry, cut, it says to cut two pairs of fusible. So you're going to need four of these. Um, and two of those are going to go on the inside of the pockets here. So I've got one ironed on to the pocket edge on this side and one ironed on to the pocket edge on that side. And then the other two are going to go on the actual pocket piece. So we'll get to that in a second. So that's everything on our front. And that's how I cut out that grown on um, fly, which will be important because when we sew the fly on this, it's I'm going to be showing you how to sew um, the fly as a grown on fly as opposed to sewing it on. So that will become important. It's just my absolute favorite. I hate sew on flies. <laughs> So that is the one area where I decided to um, deviate from the pattern. 
Actually, there's another one. I'm, I'm adding something too. Okay, so that's the front. On the back, we've got two backs cut out here. Um, the pattern has you putting the back welt on just one side, and that is the right side when worn, which is what I'm going to do. But if you wanted to put it on both sides, you could. Um, it's up to you. So what I have done is on, lay that out better here. On my right side when worn, I have marked with white chalk. So this is chalk and it will, um, Taylor's chalk, and it will go away once I've sewn everything. A damp washcloth will get all of that off. Um, but I have marked the box of my welt pocket on the right side. We need that on the right side because our pieces will get sewn to that first. Um, and then it'll get cut and then they'll get pushed to the inside. So we need the, that all on the right side. And then on the wrong side, I've marked both of my darts and I have put a piece of fusible interfacing um, around that welt on the right side. Um, right as in left and right. <laughs> not not right as in right side so the fusible interfacing is on the wrong side of the fabric but it's on the right side of the body um where that welt pocket's going to be so i just put a little piece of fusible interfacing um around there and it's overlapping that box about i don't know three eighths of an inch all the way around um the perimeter and then i've got my darts marked oops this actually brushes off really well, especially with this gabardine. Um, so you do want to be careful. You don't want to lose your chalk. But um, anything that doesn't wipe off, I'll just hit that with a damp cloth. So there we go. Those are our two backs. And that is all the fusible that will go onto them. And then next, um, because it's sitting right here, I'm going to put um, belt loops on my pants. They are not part of the pattern but I want belt loops, so that is what I'm going to do. So I have just cut a rectangle that is one and a half inches wide and I think 19 or so inches long. I like my belt loops to be three and a half inches. I cut them three and a half inches long and they are, um, I use five of them. So um, that comes up to 17 and a half inches, but I like to give myself a little wiggle room for, um, you know, just to give you, you know, if you're not right on three and a half, which is fine. Um, so that's what I've done there. I have, um, cut this it's roughly like 19 to 20 inches long and an inch and a half wide. So whatever, we'll sew the belt loop as one and then we'll cut them into the three and a half inch, um, parts. So whatever's left over, we'll just toss. So I have deviated from the plan a little or the pattern a little bit there. Okay. Let's talk about the pieces on the back. So um, you have your back pocket, your back pocket welt. You're going to cut one of those, just a little rectangle, and um, fuse interfacing to the back. So it's been fused. And if you're doing two welts, obviously you need two of these. We're just doing the one, so I just need one. Um, so yeah, that is cut and fused. Um, get my pocket pieces. All right, the next thing is also for our welt pocket. You are going to have um, two pattern pieces. One says back pocket bearer. This is the piece that needs to be cut out of your fashion fabric because it is the part that will um, be back behind the welt. So if the welt gets pulled out a little bit, that's you'll be able to see it. So um, the pieces that say bearer, well, not all of them. I don't know where bearer comes from because the fly shield also says fly bearer. I don't know. But um, but the back piece of the pocket, um, of the pocket pieces, the one that says bearer are the ones you want to cut out of fashion fabric. And then the one that says back pocket bag, we just want to cut one out of our pocketing, which is this light green for me. Okay. Um, obviously, if you're doing two welt pockets, you're going to need two of each of these, but um, I'm just doing the one, so I just need one back pocket bear cut out of um, fashion fabric and one back pocket bag cut out of the main fabric. Okay, for pieces for the front, and then we'll do the waistband, um, we've already shown the front. We've got our front pocket pieces. So like with the back, we have our front pocket bearer. Um, and you're going to cut two. It says cut one pair, which is cut two, but mirrored. 
um, I folded my fabric and cut it on the fold. So um, I was able to cut two out when I cut everything out. So we're gonna have two of those of the fashion fabric. So the front pocket bearer is out of fashion fabric. And then the front pocket bag, which is this piece 12 right here, is out of the pocketing. Now I went ahead and also the other two pieces of your fusible that you cut from the front pocket opening stay, you cut four of those if you recall. We put two on the front pockets of the pants and then we put the other two on the wrong side of this um, pocket bag. So we're gonna have real stable um, areas right here at the that slash pocket opening. So you're not gonna get bagged out um, pocket openings, which is lovely. So I have fused that to the wrong side of those. And then, which I'm really excited about, there is um, piping that goes along that pocket edge. So you're gonna cut two of these out. This is the pocket piping trim. You cut two out of your main fabric and this gets cut on the bias. So I have two of those little strips that have been cut out on the bias and those are all ready to go there. Um, and then with the um, fly, because remember we didn't cut out our fly piece, we attached that to the front of the pant, um, but we have our fly bearer, which is the fly shield. This is what's gonna get sewn behind the zipper. Um, and you just need to cut one of these out of your main fabric. And then finally, we have all of our waistband pieces. So this pant pattern has a left front waistband and a right front waistband. Um, so you're gonna cut out two mirror images of each of those and then it's got a back waistband so it's a three piece um waistband so you're going to cut two out of each of these pieces because you're going to have a waistband and a waistband facing and then and make sure they're mirrored because the inside will be opposite from the facing will be opposite of what you put on the um what the public sees what's on the outside but i have fused all the pieces of the waistband so both right fronts have been fused both left fronts have been fused, and both back pieces have been fused. Maybe if I can pull them apart, <laughs> both back ones. So yeah, so you'll have at the end of this two waistbands. Um, one will be the outside waistband, and then the other one will be the facing of that waistband to finish that off. So those have all been fused. All pieces of that have all been nice and fused. And then finally, you just need your zipper, which we already talked about, and your button, and we are ready to sew. Um, let me know if you have any questions about what needs to be cut out. Oh, you are gonna notice that we've not cut out the lining. Um, I've done that on purpose. Number one, that this pattern doesn't call for a lining, so if there are people that are making this pattern without lining it, which is fine, um, I didn't want this to get confusing, but when we get to week four, where we will be putting our lining in, um, we will cut it out at that point because that's also a standalone tutorial as well. So um, I wanted that all to be together in the same video um, in week four. So don't worry about your lining right now. You can sew along right along with me. And if you're lining your pants, that's fine. We will cut out our linings in week four. All right. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time. Bye.